crew training in 1942, was posted to Partition Bay, uh, Vancouver Island, BC. Twelve crews uh, were formed with pilots, navigators, and air gunners coming from all across Canada. Uh, we uh, did torpedo and bombing uh, flying training and went overseas together. The British then sent us to their torpedo training unit for one month of intensive training. I flew with 415 Squadron stationed at Thorny Isle, uh, East England, in, uh, in Hamden torpedo aircraft, which carried a crew of four and an 1,800-pound torpedo. We flew low at night and dropped our torp uh, from 60 feet inside 1,000 yards from the target. In the fall of 1943, because of high losses in aging aircraft, the squadron uh, converted to Wellington uh, bombers carrying eight 500-pound uh, bombs and a crew of seven. The squadron then moved from uh, Thorny Island to Bircham Newton, south of the Midlands. We continued attacking German convoys that were patrolled, uh, protected uh, by flagships from the Netherlands to France. Also German warships attacking the British convoys. With the Wellington, we bombed from 1,500 feet and occasionally, uh, as pathfinders, dropped flares to light up targets uh, for the bow fighters to attack with rockets and torpedoes. On the night of June the 22nd, 1944, our target was shipped in the harbor of Ostend, Belgium. We took off just before midnight. There were some patchy uh, low clouds and we had difficulty finding the target. After four passes to the harbor at 2,000 feet, the pilot John Ensign from Winnipeg decided to go down to 500 feet to find the ships and then climb to 1,500 feet to bomb. It was now getting near morning and a faint glow was in the eastern sky. As we made our fifth run in and we could, uh, and they, we could be seen uh, against this dim light. Halfway through the harbor it seemed as all guns started firing. One shell exploded in our port motor which control the landing gear and the turrets. John uh, jettisoned the, the bombs uh, when the motor seized and stopped. We threw the flares and everything movable uh, out to lighten the load. I came out of the rear turret and opened the ammunition box uh, to the turret that, uh, fed, the, uh, that uh, fed the four machine guns and uh, threw out 8,000 rounds of uh, ammunition down the flare chute. As we expected a ditch in the ocean, Ross grabbed the gallon thermos of tea and got under the escape hatch ready to take the tea into the rubber dinghy if we get out of the aircraft. He spoke with an English accent, though he was Canadian, and he never lived this down. We set course for Manston in England, uh, known as the uh, crash aerodrome or graveyard for a wrecked aircraft 100 miles away, as it had a long runway for emergency landing. As the, as the hydraulics were gone, John ordered the second pilot to pump the wheels down by hand on a very stiff pump, approximately 250 strokes. At about 150, he said, I can't pump anymore. John said, shut up and keep pumping, which he did, and the wheels finally locked down. A distress call to Manson Control Tower to light the uh, runway <coughs> brought lights on both ends, but not the middle. The tower then decided to go around again. We were then at treetop level and just hanging in. Uh, the air was blue for a minute or so between the piles and the control tower, but the lights soon went on, and we were able to do a steep turn and land straight in uh, safely. One month earlier, had uh, several direct hits on a large, heavily, voided, uh, heavily guarded convoy, and on the March 7, 1944, dive bombed through considerable heavy flak, a formation of 30 e-boats are like small destroyers that were trying to intercept the invasion fleets uh, going to Norway. They scattered and turned back. According to intelligence reports, two were severely damaged and one possibly sunk. For these and other uh, successful attacks, our uh, pilot John Enns was presented with a distinguished flying cross at Buckingham Palace. The members of our two crews have kept in touch regularly since we started flying together 51 years ago only three of the original crews finished. One month later, <coughs> after, getting, uh, uh, after getting hit at Ostend, that was in July 1944, uh, 415 Squadron was moved to number six uh, Canadian bomber group in the Midlands, a new uh, Canadian group that was just being formed. 
Our crew and five other crews who were experienced in low-level night flying under the radar screen were transferred to 524 RAF squadron with the same type of targets and finished our tour of 41 trips with them in November 1944. Our crews were then split up and posted at different stations in England, Scotland and Ireland. I was posted at Dalekey, Scotland as briefing officer with the rank of flying officer. This was a big station, 1,100 airmen, six squadrons, uh, one British, one Canadian, one New Zealand, one Australian, supported by one Polish and one Norwegian squadron. Uh, this, uh, wing, uh, main, uh, this wing's main uh, duty was to stop German uh, shipping coming down the Norwegian coast to the Baltic Sea to supply the German armies. I remained briefing officer at Dalekey until the end of the war.